day one for Media Center and Radio Row is in the books. So what happened with Cliff Kingsbury and how did the Raiders stumble upon Luke Getze? That plus a whole lot more comes up on Tuesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for February 6, 2024. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. As always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, we appreciate that in a major way. The show continues to grow each and every day, and that's because of you, Raider Nation, of course, because of my man, Ari. He does a great job each and every day posting us up on YouTube, making sure we're looking good and we're sounding good. So shout out to him. You can check him out on Twitter at Ari Producers. You can hit me up as well at your boy Q254. And you know we got the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707 704-4693. Tons of feedback in segment number three. Going to get as much in as possible. Calls and texts on Luke Getze, on Cliff Kingsbury, on the direction that the Raiders team is going as far as their coaching search goes, and uh, a whole lot more when it comes to Raider football. That's all coming up in segment number three. Segment number two, a little bit of an explanation about what happened with Cliff Kingsbury, how the contract negotiations and why the contract negotiations are both down, and uh, what to expect from Luke Getze if, in fact, he does become the Raiders' next offensive coordinator and, uh, you know, how he even got involved into the mix as quickly as he did. That's segment number two. Albert Breer from Monday Morning Quarterback actually sat down with JT the Brick and Eddie Pascal on Radio Row on Monday on Raider Nation Radio 920 and Raiders.com. So just got a couple sound bites. I want you to hear from him and we'll uh, kind of get a little bit more deeper dive into what went wrong, especially with Cliff Kingsbury. That's all in segment number two. Here in segment number one, I'd like to give you the news and notes, kind of a day one recap of the uh, Media Center Radio Radio Row, uh, the very first day. I shouldn't say it's Radio Row because there's a lot more outlets than just radio. There's TV, there's podcasts, there's uh, TikTok, there's all kind of different uh, outlets. If you have an outlet, you're probably here uh, in the media center at the Mandalay Bay. So we'll give you all the latest and greatest from there, recapping day one. We'll jump right into that after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is LinkedIn Jobs. They help you find the qualified candidate you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And off top, as I rolled into the convention center on uh, Monday, it was really fun. I got here super early in the morning. I was able to see all the people roll in. And normally, and I've done a lot of these, anyone who's been following the show for quite a while knows that I do this each and every year. I'm on some radio road. Last year, it was in Phoenix. The year before that, it was L.A., uh, you know, so on and so forth. So we've done a bunch of these. Uh, but for a Monday, usually it's kind of like dipping your toes into the water. You just get here and, you know, you ease in, see if it's cold or not, and see what the temperature is like. Uh, but today it was a lot busier. Today it was a, a lot busier of a Monday uh, than usual, which was fun. You know, it was fun to see everybody come in. And it kind of felt like the first day of school where, you know, you've been off all summer long and uh, all your friends have been doing their own thing. And then all of a sudden they show up and you're like, hey, man, welcome back. I ain't seen you all summer. That's kind of how it was uh, the first day on Radio Row, seeing all my friends from different uh, radio outlets, media outlets across the country uh, rolling in. And believe me, they are all represented here, probably over 250 to 300 different outlets here on Radio Row and at the Mandalay Bay. But a uh, lot to uh, get to and a, a lot of fun. I'm sitting across from a, a nice little uh, gaming station that they have with the slot machines, the NFL slot machines that I found out do not, uh, you cannot win money with them. And <laughs> there are no tickets that can be printed, but uh, they're kind of fun to play. And so there's a few of those right across from us. Got DraftKings across from us, got Sirius XM Radio. I'm looking over at Fox Radio, ESPN, or the major outlets, and of course, all the local stations like the one. Uh, I'm at Raider Nation Radio 920. Our sister station, ESPN Las Vegas, is right across from us. And we're literally right as soon as you walk in. We've got the best location in the house. It's fantastic. As soon as we walk in the door, you see our big banners. You see our big backdrops. And you cannot miss us. And, of course, with my loud self, you can't help but to hear us. So uh, it's going to be a fun week here on Radio Row. And I'm going to try to do my very best to bring you everything, all the sounds, all the sights, so you feel like you're right here uh, on Radio Row with me. But on top. Thought it was really cool to see Antonio Pierce reach out to Raider Nation by way of the Players Tribune. Got a piece out, says, this is dead serious. Raiders football, the silver and black, let's effing go. Again, it's on the Players Tribune, and I definitely encourage you to read it. It's talking about bringing back Raiders football. It kind of gives you that old school Raiders feel, lets you know that they don't care about being liked, but they will be respected. 
uh, right? He mentions that this is not a job to him. This is a dream come true. And uh, I can I can embrace with that, you know, and I can understand exactly where he's coming from. Uh, this I say it all the time is a dream come true for me to have the opportunity to cover my favorite team growing up and be as close uh, to the product as possible and still being able to be who I am and, and provide this kind of uh, coverage when there wasn't too many years ago that there was no Raider coverage. Now there's a bunch of different podcasts out there, which I applaud. I don't hate on any of them. I encourage everyone to go out there and put a podcast out or, or put a show out and, 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 you know, just embrace it. I think it's awesome. I really do. I'll never, you know, say, Oh, you can't listen to them or don't check. No, it's soak it all in, man. Whatever the flavor is you prefer, it's all good. I have no problem with that. And I encourage people to continue to make content. I think it's awesome to see as much Raiders, uh, content out there that there is because there wasn't too long ago that there was none out there. So now we got Raider Nation Radio 920. Uh, we've got this podcast. We've got many others out there covering the silver and black. But uh, AP has a play a piece out right now in the Players Tribune. I definitely encourage you to go check out. Uh, also, the Raiders granted permission to Jason Simmons. Jason Simmons was granted permission to speak with the uh, to speak with the defensive pass game coordinators uh, there in Green Bay. So uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm tripping. Raiders granted commander's permission to speak with defensive pass game coordinator Jason Simmons per source. He worked closely with the new coordinator, Joe Witt Jr. in Green Bay, and is considered a prime candidate for a position on the defensive staff. That is from Jeremy Fowler from ESPN. So, uh, yeah, Jason Simmons, I thought that he was going to be a guy that for sure was going to continue to be on, uh, on uh, um, Patrick Graham's defensive staff, uh, but maybe not. Right. We know that they just hired uh, another uh, cornerbacks coach. So maybe uh, he's going to be going on to greener pastures or where he thinks is going to be greener pastures. So Jason Simmons is talking to the commanders and we'll see what happens with that. But I thought he did a really good job as the DB coach for the Raiders. Uh, thought that he was going to be working in collaborations, uh, you know, there with with others that have just been hired. But it looks like maybe he's going to be going on to another team. So that's definitely something to pay attention to and monitor. Also. Final little nugget I have for segment number one of today's Lockdown Raiders podcast news and notes of the day. I caught up with Jacoby Myers and Aiden O'Connell here on Radio Row, and they were actually representing Bounty, the Bounty paper towels. And it's funny, they have a booth here, and uh, they were walking around. They had uh, their Bounty jackets on, nice green jackets with a big B on them. But uh, Bounty, you know, there there was a, it was really cool what they did is they gave out free wings to all the media members here if you went over to the booth and, and picked them up. And so, obviously, if you have wings and you have sauce on them, what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need paper towels to clean your hands off. So they had Aiden O'Connell and Jacoby Myers representing uh, Bounty. And so I saw them and I was like, hey, I went over to the lady and was like, hey, can I get a couple minutes with them? They said, yeah, well, they're on their way to another uh, stop. But if you want to walk and talk with them, you can. And you can catch up with them for a couple minutes. And let me tell you, Raider Nation, that is not easy to do. And if you're uh, on Twitter, at your boy Q254, I actually tweeted out a picture of myself walking with Aiden O'Connell and Jacoby Myers. So only had a couple minutes to catch up with them. Just, you know, just talk about what they had going on with Bounty and also just talk briefly about the silver and black. So here's that conversation, quick conversation with Jacoby Myers and Aiden O'Connell on Monday. Live from Radio Row. Here back on uh, Radio Row, and I'm here with uh, Raiders quarterback Aiden O'Connell and uh, Raiders wide receiver Jacoby Myers. But the way you were throwing those uh, those paper towels, you might be a quarterback too. I know you got that in your in your pedigree. No, nah, that was a little baseball thing. That's what it <laughs> felt like back in the day. You threw that like it was nothing, though. You're just kind of effortless. Just I'm just going to throw these paper towels in there. <laughs> yeah, tried to be smooth a little bit. So, Aiden, last time we saw you guys, we were in the Raiders locker room. It was following Week 18 victory over Denver. How's it feel now to be on Radio Row for Super Bowl 58? Yeah, it's awesome, obviously, to be able to host the Super Bowl in our city. Um, obviously, we wish we were playing in it, but uh, it's a great experience. Get to do a lot of fun stuff this week. Does that give you a little bit of, I don't want to say motivation, everything's motivation, but does it give you a little bit of a little something-something in your neck of, okay, you know, we need to we need to be in this game, not be hosting the game? Yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, when you know the Chiefs are using our locker room and, you know, we're a little pissed off about uh, just not being in it, but we got to win more games. So it's on us ultimately to, to be better. You know, Aiden just mentioned it, Jacoby, the Chiefs using the locker room. What, what does that feel like? That's a division rival. Really, in this situation, there's no win situation. The Niners are in your stadium so are the Chiefs how does this feel right yeah, it ain't the best feeling but like you said man we got to prove it like this we a victim of our situation we did this to ourselves so it's all good so you ready to come back and fire up for uh, for next season what, what's the what's the feeling like excited excited man we see how half the year went with AP so a full year with him hopefully is much better so how do you guys feel now the AP officially I know you guys wanted him to get the job he got the job how do you guys feel about that yeah I think most guys are, are happy about it you know he, he deserved it obviously the great job was stepping in a tough situation and I'm just happy for him honestly I know it's a big opportunity for him so 
hopefully we make it work for him. What's the plans for the rest of the week? Bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. You guys are the wingmen. You got the you got the jackets on. You guys feeling good? Oh, it gives the whole outfit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I was say, I was about to say, look, I could be a brother too. We could be three. We could be three brothers. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there was the conversation right there with Jacoby Myers and Nate O'Connell. And again, just real brief, and we're walking and talking. And please believe that's not easy to walk, talk, try to record, try to get my phone close enough so they can, you know, be picked up on the sound and everything. It ain't easy to do, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And it's just, you know, one of the ways to to, to make it work here on Radio Row. It's not always going to be easy, uh, but you got to hustle. And you know, one thing about me, Raider Nation, I will always get my hustle on. So that's what I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. A little news and notes of the day live from Radio Row in the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. Coming up in segment number two, Albert Breer, Monday morning quarterback, sat down with JT the Brick and Eddie Pascal. I got a couple sound bites from that conversation as it was heard on Raider Nation Radio 920. Uh, about what went wrong with the Cliff Kingsbury contract situation and Luke Getze, what to expect from him if and when the Raiders do make him their next offensive coordinator. That's all coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before I get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board, has a vast network of more than a billion with a B professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all the work while making the process easy and quick. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, 80%, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 20 20- for hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. They're constantly finding ways to process easier. That's why they launched a, a feature that helps you write job descriptions, makes the process even easier and even quicker. 2.5 million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. So what do you need to do? Well, you need to post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I also want to tell you about FanDuel. And, well, happy Super Bowl week, right, to all who celebrate from FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. And if you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your fair football snacks, and placing some super bets. And you can really have fun with some of the super bets. Some of the prop bets they have are fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, there's all kind of different prop bets on all these different players from touchdowns being scored, from yards, from touchdown passes, interceptions, turnovers, sacks, all kind of stuff. Just you got to check it out. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to stay engaged with the Super Bowl in a game that might not be that much fun for Raider Nation when it's the 49ers and the Chiefs. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment, moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Knew that coming to Radio Row, I was going to get more information on what went wrong with the Cliff Kingsbury situation. As he was all set to be the offensive coordinator, we have been doing a lot of research on what to expect from a Cliff Kingsbury-led offense. Uh, done a lot of the details, but we all said, you know, well, you know, if in fact it gets done because it hadn't been done, it wasn't official. And look, we all believe that Luke Getze is going to get done and he's going to be the offensive coordinator. But look, we found out about this on Saturday. It is now Tuesday and we still haven't heard anything. Now, with that being said, as soon as uh, you hear this, it might all of a sudden come out that, hey, the Raiders have officially hired Luke Getze. And then it's all said and done. But until it's actually official, it's not official. So you won't hear me say that it's a done deal until I know for a fact that it's a done deal. And, you know, side note, I'm expecting uh, Hugh Jackson to be here on Radio Row sometime this week, maybe Wednesday or Thursday, and I would love to get him on. Matter of fact, I will get him on when he's here on Radio Row and get his thoughts because I do believe he plays a role in all of this. I think that he's going to do not enough, so that's something to definitely pay attention to. But let's get back to the Cliff Kingsbury situation, the Luke Getze situation. Albert Breer, who's one of the most connected guys in the business from Monday Morning Quarterback, uh, he sat down with JT the Brick and Eddie Pascal, talked about Getze, talked about Kingsbury and everything that went on and how they ended up from Kingsbury to Getze. So off top, uh, what happened with the contract, right? We had a couple people call in on the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line on Monday's show saying, hey, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing that. I don't think that that's the case. Well, it was, in fact, the case. It was, in fact, the case about uh, the contract, the length of the contract, and the fact that Cliff Kingsbury had options. So here's Albert Breer on what happened with Kingsbury and his contract. Yeah, my understanding is they didn't want to go to a third year, 
and that created an opening and a number of teams swooped in hearing the cliff was available again and the commanders are able to go in and get him. Um, and look like, you know, because he was the last hire, Dan Quinn wanted to be aggressive in filling out his staff and um, he had had some college names on his staff and was open minded about where he wanted to take it um, offensively. Um, and obviously for any defensive minded head coach, that's going to be a big hire. So they got aggressive and were able to go in there and get that done. Um, and, you know, the Raiders, I, I, you know, there's part of me like that wonders how much of it is all the guys that you're still paying that aren't working here anymore. You know, your John Gruden's, your Josh McDaniels, your Dave Ziegler's. Um, there are a lot of contracts that still need to be paid out. And so, you know, you certainly can ask that question, like how much of this was to avoid having another contract that was, you know, potentially going to have dead money down the line, which, again, isn't the best way of doing business, I don't think. But you can understand based on the years that they've had here the last few years um, why they would make decisions from a business standpoint. So it went down like that, right? I mean, they were offering two years. Kingsbury wanted three. And then I heard on a further extent was that, OK, the Raiders said, all right, we'll, we'll give you three uh, instead. Like they went back and forth a couple times and they said, all right, we'll give you three. But at that point, Kingsbury was already kind of said, Hey, man, I got other options. I don't need to stick around here. I don't want to do this. I wanted three. I thought you were going to give me three off top. You're not. So, okay, uh, we're going to go on and move on to something else. And, man, you see how quickly he moved on and was able to pick up the Washington Commanders job. I mean, think about this. Luke Getze still is not even official with the Raiders, and Cliff Kingsbury is already official with Washington. He became official with Washington on Sunday. So he probably already had one foot in, one foot out to begin with to be able to move on that quickly and get picked up probably already you know was already kind of on the fence of things and then when he had that little bit of a you know contract dispute it was like okay i'm out that's the sign i needed and sometimes it works out look you don't always have to be first to be the best option right but clearly luke getsy was not the first option when it comes to the offensive coordinator position that was cliff kingsbury so here's albert breer on you know how quickly they moved on to Getze, how that may have been you know even a Devonte Adams influence because look Devonte Adams was there in Green Bay, Getze was there in Green Bay, so uh, here's kind of the timeline as far as Albert Breer is concerned, and if Devonte Adams had any kind of role to play in this. I mean Luke was on the list from the beginning, so um, there was three guys that um, that that AP had in mind. Cliff was one, Luke was one, and the third one I'm sorry is escaping me now. I reported it somewhere, and I'm just. At like a little bit of a brain cramp that I can't remember the third name, but they were both in consideration at the beginning. And I do think that that's part of it. You know, um, you know, one thing for better or worse that Mark has done over the last few years, he's listened to his players and you guys know that right now there are pitfalls with that, like where can it create some organizational chaos? I think that that's the risk you run. But um, the flip side of it is that it does give you insight into things that are happening and um, the way things work other places in the league. And, Devontae's experience working with Luke Getzey in Green Bay certainly does play into something like this. And, um, you know, having those three guys that, that Mark really has leaned on, I think, over the last year or so, and Max Crosby, Devontae Adams, and Josh Jacobs does give you some institutional knowledge in a situation like this. So as he said, there was three guys, and he couldn't remember the third name, but it was clearly Cliff Kingsbury, clearly Luke Getzey. I believe the third guy might have been Hugh Jackson. I'm not too sure, though, right? I just know that that was a conversation that was out there uh, quite a bit, so I'm not 100% sure if that's who he was thinking of and just couldn't uh, you know, come up with it at the time. But there was a few names that were out there. I know Alex Van Pelt was one. Of course, we heard a lot about Clint Kubiak, who uh, the Raiders still have not gotten an opportunity to interview, and he cannot sign a deal until after the Super Bowl is over. So maybe if it's not... It's not all sign, seal, and deliver as far as Getsy is concerned. Maybe they do double back or triple back and try to get Clint Kubiak uh, sealed up. I, who knows? But you hear right there from Albert Breer that Getsy was definitely one of the guys that uh, Antonio Pierce had been thinking about from the jump. And, and, you know, that was the question I had for Monday was, okay, that's a big, huge, you know, change from Kingsbury and his style to Getsy and his style, completely different. So what exactly – are the Raiders getting? What What should you expect in a Luke Getze-led offense? Here's Albert Breer speaking of that. I think it gives you a piece of like the McVay-Shanahan um, tree via uh, Matt LaFleur. Um, and, you know, certainly he worked with quarterbacks at different ends of the spectrum. He has all that experience having worked with Aaron Rodgers. And then the last couple of years has to kind of make it work with a different type of quarterback in Justin Fields, who's a lot younger. Um, I think Luke's really smart. Luke is likable and will get the respect of the players. Um, and, I, and I do think for AP, I mean, I think one of the things that um, is encouraging about where AP is taking it, and, you know, we'll see, but one of the things that's encouraging about where AP is taking it is I do think he does have 
a level of self-awareness and that he knows what he doesn't know. And knowing that you need somebody who's got some experience calling plays on that side of the ball, um, I think is important because that's going to allow you if you have to help out on defense, if you have to do stuff, the over the top, like head coach type stuff, um, you know, you got somebody experienced over there. You're not going to have to babysit the offense, right? So I think that's the advantage of it. But, you know, from a scheme perspective, um, an adaptable scheme, I think. And um, one that, you know, again, is like built on those McVay Shanahan tenants, which is the term they use, the illusion of complexity. Yeah. It's complex for the defense, um, but simple for your own players. So there you go. I like how he said it's not too hard for the offense to pick up, but it's not easy for the defense to understand. And it's not that it's not an offense that's going to be, uh, you know, something so predictable because it's simplistic, but it is simple for the offense to execute. And so I feel like that there's a lot of different looks coming out of the same, you know, or a lot of different plays and a lot of different, uh, you know, just whatever, just, just things that they can do off the same formation. That's kind of what I get from that. But obviously we won't know until we get to see it, uh, you know, but that was Albert Breer just kind of speaking on it. You know, I know a lot of people uh, questioned when he had tweeted out that Luke Getzey is highly re respected across the league. We don't know how, how much he's respected, right? We don't know how many people across the league, what they like seriously, honestly think about him. We know from a fan base point of view, when we look over at Chicago, we're like, yeah, they weren't that good. So we don't really respect him that highly, but he could very well be a highly respected guy across the league. We just don't know because we're not talking to those people. So when the guys like Albert Breer, who, like I said, are very well connected uh, within the NFL and, you know, pretty much have a finger on the pulse of everything going on, they say, and he says that, you know, he's highly respected and has a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, gives him a lot of credit and thinks he's going to do a really good job. I mean, that's all we can really go on as of right now. Obviously, we'll see if, in fact, he does get that job. But it kind of gives you a little bit more understanding of what happened, how they ended up with Luke Getze, and what to expect moving forward. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts throughout that Lockdown Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. We'll do that coming up. Segment number three of today's Lockdown Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about a couple more sponsors here on the show. And the first one is DoorDash. And I'll tell you right now, if there was ever a day that I needed to use DoorDash and really needed to know how to do it on my own, it is this whole week. This whole week live at Radio Row. I mean, I'm here 8 a.m. till after midnight each and every day. That is a long, long time to be out there. And, you know, the wild thing is I had a buddy uh, give me, bring me a piece of pizza when I was transitioning from my uh, Raider Nation Radio 920 show to my ESPN show. He's like, hey, I know you're going to be here all night. Here's a piece of pizza. It would be warm, but I had to go back through security, so it's cold. So that's why DoorDash would come in so handy because, of course, they got the, the heat bag where they can keep all your food warm. So I could just DoorDash uh, some food right here to Mandalay Bay, right to the convention center, meet them at the door so they don't have to go through security, and I could, boom, pick up the food and be good to go, and it could be warm. I'm going to do that sometime this week. And that's because I have the down, I've downloaded the app. It's on my phone and I can use lock 23 to get a discount. Matter of fact, I can get 50% off a $10 value when I spend $15 or more on the first order. Now I can only do that one time, but I'll try to hustle it a couple more times, but you can do it right now. If you haven't done it at all, if you haven't downloaded the app, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and put it on your phone. You don't have to be in Mandalay Bay. You don't have to be on radio row. You don't have to be here from 8 AM till after midnight you know, to, to be, be able to use DoorDash. You can use DoorDash from every, wherever you're at, whenever you want. Simple. Just download the app right now. Uh, you'll get 50% off of $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. You just got to make sure you use the promo code LOCK23. That's L-O-C-K-E-D. The number is 23, all one word, LOCK23. And you'll get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. Just download the app. Promo code LOCK23, subject to change, terms apply. I also want to tell you about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and a lot more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money's back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. You're not burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. 
Here we go, Raider Nation, segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to get in your calls and text draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with my brother, Border Jumping Raider. He's calling to talk about my Paving the Way bonus episode that was put up on Sunday and also talks a little Luke Getze. Here he is, Border Jumping Raider. Q, Border Jumping Raider from the 664 slash 619 Tijuana, San Diego. I uh, watched your, uh, and thanks for taking my call. I watched the, uh, locked on the little bonus, uh, special last night on paving the way. You know, I always said to you, the cream always rises to the top. You are the hardest working guy out there. You know, it's, it's um, your, uh, your path to how you got there is totally impressive. And, um, as far as, uh, the Raiders and Getsy, you know, man, I, uh, I can't get too emotional, can't get down, I can't get all riled up. So we see the product come September. Because I just live by that out that credo, you know, Al Davis. Just win, baby. That's all I care. It's all about the team. I just want to see the team win. I want to see the team do well. And so that's all I got to say, you know. And um, all I got to say is, Vamanos Raiders! Hey, thanks so much for the call. Thanks for the compliment on the show. And honestly, I didn't even know they were going to put that episode up. I literally recorded that probably two months ago. And they didn't put it up and no one ever said anything to me about it. So I thought they just didn't like the way it came out. So I was like, oh, well, you know, it was fun. It was a little Sunday afternoon that, you know, they did a little Q&A with me. And I thought it was really cool. But uh, I'm glad that it came out and I'm glad that people were able to check it out. If you don't know what that is, it's a paving the way, uh, paving the way, uh, you know, kind of a uh, little series that the Locked On Podcast Network is doing. And they wanted me to be involved in it because they thought my story is a really good story of how I started out in music radio, how I got involved in radio, period, and how I ended up where I'm at right now. And so it was really fun. I love to tell the story because sometimes it can encourage someone else to, you know, chase their dreams or, you know, just kind of follow a path that maybe not the most conventional path. And, you know, it's not necessarily always what you think that you want to do, but it could end up being something that worked out really well for you. And so I think that my path sometimes is encouraging to others. And, uh, and and if it is, then that's cool. So thanks so much. I'm glad that you checked that out. And if you're subscribing to the uh, Locked On Raiders podcast, you should already have it on your feed. It's paving the way. Uh, I did it, like I said, a couple months ago, but they dropped it on Sunday. Thought it was really cool. And as far as Getsy goes, your approach is the only one to take, man. Got to wait and see how it plays out for real. That's really all uh, we can do. And, and honestly, it's not even 100% official that he's going to be the offensive coordinator. And as we have should have learned, that until it is, it's not, right? I mean, that's just how it is. But thanks so much for the call. I definitely appreciate you. Uh, next up, got a text from Juan in L.A. He says, Q, love the podcast. is my morning go-to. I had this. I had said this with Kingsbury, so call hired. But now with the unofficial hire with Getsy, we now can try to assume how we would attack the draft and a dream scenario would be at 13, draft the right tackle or a defensive tackle. I think Penix or Knicks will be there at the end of the first and jump back in late uh, and get your quarterback. Just like we drafted uh, Mac, and then day two jumped out and got a uh, got up to the top of the round to get DC. I know wishful thinking, but we'd be great. Thanks again, Q. And as always, just win, baby. That's Juan in LA. Sorry, I got that a little uh, mixed up a little bit, but I kind of get the gist of what you're trying to say. Uh, you know, attack the draft, go get a, the right tackle of the future, or maybe a defensive tackle, and then uh, maybe at the back end of round one, uh, jump up like the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens did with Lamar Jackson, get back in the back in of round one and get your quarterback. You get your fifth year option. Uh, you know, the Raiders got Derek Carr, obviously, in round two, but they got Khalil Mack first uh, in round one. And that's an approach you could take. I don't think Michael Penix and Bo Nix are going to be there at the end of round one. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. Obviously, the combine is going to have a lot to do with it. The pro days are going to have a lot to do with it. But those guys were uh, some big time players in college last season. Of course, Michael Penix was in New York as a Heisman Trophy finalist, was in the national championship game. I think they that they're going to be taken pretty early. So if the Raiders want either one of those guys, they'll probably have to take them at 13. That's just my thoughts. Uh, I could be absolutely wrong, but, um, you know, it, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, quarterbacks are a premium, so I could definitely see them being drafted uh, in the top, you know, 15, 16 overall picks. But thanks for the text. I do appreciate you. Uh, up next, got a call from Brent in L.A. He's calling to talk about Luke Getzey as the next potential offensive coordinator for the Raiders. Also shares a few thoughts on Cliff Kingsbury. Here he is, Brent from L.A. Hey, what's up, Q? Brent from Los Angeles here. Uh, you know, look, I was in the same boat with Jesse and kind of automatically assuming and I just got done listening to your show today and see that if you weren't successful in one location that you'll be successful in the next. I think also stands true that even if you were successful in a location, doesn't mean that you'll be successful in the next. And if I'm being honest, 
honest, while Clint, Cliff Kingsbury was definitely an exciting potential, I also resonated with AP when he said that not everyone is built to be a Raider. And I take that as coaches and players. And, I mean, I, I got to be honest, I just don't see Cliff Kingsbury being of the Raider DNA. Everyone seems to forget that when he got put onto that sideline over at USC with the great Caleb Williams, he was, I think they were three and six once he touched that sideline. So, obviously, he wasn't doing much consulting over there. So, you know, keep your head up. Let's give this guy a chance see what happens. Out. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And, yeah, you never have any idea how this stuff is going to play out, right? I was very interested in Kingsbury because he brings a fresh idea to the table. But – the one concern I did have that I really didn't speak on too much was the up-tempo, right? It doesn't really allow the defense to rest very much, and if they start getting three, three and outs consistently, then all of a sudden that defense is on the field for a long time. And we all know how it is when defenses are on the field. I don't care who you are. If you're on a defense and you're on the field for a long time, you start to get worn out. And the Raiders' defense is playing really well. Uh, they look really good right now. I expect them to be better next season with Patrick Graham coming back with some more additions added to the team. But, man, you start to get worn out the more you're on the field. So that up-tempo approach that Kingsbury has, that was my one, like, real big concern about the offense moving forward. You know, if it's clicking, it's clicking. But if it's not, you could be in some trouble. But, Brent, thanks so much for that call. Definitely appreciate you. Uh, Next, got a text from A.B. in Inglewood. Man, I got a lot of Southern California representation on today's show. huh? He says, what's up, Q? A.B. from Inglewood. Uh, Got a lengthy text here. He said, just wanted to talk about Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy a little bit. I'm sure you'll get to him in a few weeks closer to the draft, but the more I watch some of his games and tape, the more I get excited. He'll definitely need to add a bit of weight and muscle during his first few years in the NFL, but, man, this kid could be the answer for the Raiders at quarterback. Despite being limited system-wise in a run-heavy offense at Michigan, in two years he led the team to the college football playoffs and then the national championship the following year. In his ring year, he completed over 70% of his passes, threw for almost 3,000 yards in that run-heavy offense and showed toughness, poise, and quick processing against some of the best teams in the country. Made some special throws against Alabama this year that just makes your jaw drop. He'll take hits to make the throw tough throws, too. He makes big plays with his legs, and he can spiral that ball into tight windows where his receivers can make plays after the catch. I don't know about you, but if the Raiders stay put at 13, J.J. has AP and Mark Davis written all over him. Love your show. Looking forward to some more quarterback talk. Thanks, Q. That's A.B. and Inglewood. And, yeah, I'm intrigued by McCarthy. I'm not too sure where he goes, though. I'm just not too sure. I'm, I, I got to do some more research. I am intrigued by him. And, hell, we've heard Jim Harbaugh say he's the best quarterback in Michigan history. And Michigan's had some pretty good quarterbacks in their history, right? There's a guy named Tom Brady that was pretty good. So, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm intrigued to see about him. He does have the uh, ability to get out of there with his legs. Obviously, he's a leader. He's a national champion. He's a winner, right? He's been taught really well under Jim Harbaugh. So maybe he can uh, end up being that guy. I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, you know, I, he he has he has a traits. He has a strong arm. I know that for sure. Uh, but I'll have to do some more research. You're right. That's one of the things I'll do. Maybe I'll be able to do some more research on him this week at a uh, you know in Radio Row. Maybe I'll run into someone that covers Michigan like a glove and get a little conversation about him. If not, definitely next week we'll dive into that and dive into some more quarterback conversation because I do think that that's part of the conversation with the Raiders moving forward. But thanks so much for that. Definitely jot him down and keep him in my notes. Thanks uh, for the text. Up next, got a call from Brother Dre in the A. That's Atlanta. He's calling to talk about Luke Getzey, and that's a word to describe the potential hire. Here he is, Brother Dre in the A. Hey, Q, it's uh, Brother Dre in the A, uh, Andre in Atlanta. Here, man, um, I don't know if my, my last message came through or not, but basically uh, my thing is with this whole idea of getting Luke Getzey, um, <laughs> so what we're saying is he's not good enough for Chicago, but he's good enough for the Raiders. Is that is that where we are here? I think that we're so much better than that, and um, I, I really hope that we go a different direction and we're able to pair uh, Antonio Pierce with a an offensive coordinator that really is gonna gonna help elevate our team, elevate our brand, and, and, and get us to the next level. It just, it just doesn't sound like something where this guy is uh, someone who's in demand, and it really sounds like we're just settling. Anyway, take care. Thanks for the call, my man. And yeah, it does feel like a little bit of a settle. You know, I mean, Getsy wasn't the first choice. Obviously, sometimes that works out, right? I mean, let's, let's look at the most recent, you know, um, time that that happened. C.J. Stroud wasn't the Texans' first choice. They wanted Bryce Young, right? They were pissed that they got the number two overall pick, that Lovey Smith won that game. It turned out to be the best thing for him. They passed on Bryce Young because they couldn't get him. Ended up with C.J. Stroud. He was the best quarterback his rookie year. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to have the best career. 
Bryce Young might bounce back, but I think they're very pleased with what they have in C.J. Stroud, and that wasn't their first option. So sometimes it works out. I, I used this example on the radio on Monday uh, on Radio Row. I said, look, I know I haven't been everybody's first option all the time, but I might end up being their best option. <laughs> it's funny. My uh, One of my coworkers, Steve Cofield, looked over when I said that and started rolling. He was like, yeah, we've all been there, huh? I was like, yeah, I mean, that just happens sometimes. Sometimes we're not always the first option, but, uh, you know, we might end up being the best option. So maybe Luke Getzey works out really well if, in fact, they do go ahead and hire him at the offensive coordinator position. Again, that's not official yet. Uh, I said it with Kingsbury, and it ended up being, you know, it ended up, like, coming to, to fruition. And I had no idea that he wasn't going to take the job. But, uh, you know, until it becomes official, until we get that email from the Raiders, I, uh, I I don't like to say that, oh, yeah, it's a done deal, even though there's plenty of articles written about it being factual and it was a wrap and all that and, until it wasn't. So, uh, yeah, I, I like to you know be very careful. I don't need to be first. I need to be correct. So, Brother Dre, thanks so much for that. And we'll see uh, if it ends up being a subtle or we'll see if it ends up being a really good hire. So uh, thanks so much. I do appreciate you. It's always good to hear from you. Uh, I got a text from Big, Big Drew in Houston. Got a call from Eric in Oakland. We'll get that on tomorrow's show. We'll get some more sights and sounds from uh, Radio Row uh, day two. We'll see how that shakes out, what the day will bring us. I'm sure it's going to have a lot of fun because that's what the whole week is all about. It's fun. It's a lot of work, but it's, it's, it puts a lot of, you got to put a lot of energy into everything. By Friday, I'll be delirious, but I'm okay with that. Right. I mean, that's 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 what we do it for. So uh, until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.